All right, what's up everybody? So we're here today. Um, got the engine block back here behind me. Got the bed plate down here. Got some scale and stuff on those as part of the Dakota build that we're doing. Um, you can see it hanging here over the lift over top of me. Uh, it's a little rainy outside today, so I'm doing everything inside the shop here. Uh, what we've got is a plastic barrel here, and I've got a couple of pieces of rebar laying here in the floor. What we're gonna do is we're gonna build an electrolysis cleaner so we can put the engine block down inside of it and do a full clean on it. Uh, basically, we want to clean the entire thing. First step in the process is we need a plastic barrel. Um, this is one that we had sitting around the house that we picked up somewhere uh, to use. And I'm going to cut the top out of this. And then we'll build the electrical system to go in it and basically get this set up where we can get this block clean. So let me dive in. I'm going to go ahead and cut this top out. All right, so ended up, went in here and cut this out, and I wanted to cut it where it had a smooth lip as much as possible. Still got a couple of places here and there that I'm gonna go back and shape up just a little bit in order to get in here and make this uh, nice and smooth coming in and out so nothing catches on it. Went through and cleaned up the edge real good in here. So now we've got this nice smooth lip. Um, one of the things to keep in mind, if you're doing this with a plastic barrel, keep this top ring intact. Um, some people will just come in here and cut this thing off underneath. And what that does is it allows the barrel to distort over time. By leaving this ridge in here, um, one, it gives us something to attach our anodes to. And secondly, it gives us some structural support to the barrel itself. Um, so I'm gonna get all these pieces out of here, get the water out. Uh, I'm gonna put a drain in the bottom of the barrel so I'll be able to drain it when I need to. And uh, then I'll get started on making the anodes for the electrical part. All right, guys. So we got the drain installed. I've got all my scrap pieces and stuff here. Um, just cut down some chunks of angle iron here. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to weld the rebar on top of this so that it fits right over the edge here, nice and snug. And then I'm going to weld my electrical bolt on the back, back here, so I can run a wire from each one to each one. And then something I thought of after the fact was I had this piece of uh, round steel, or flat steel that's shaped round. It's basically the exact size of the drum so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to weld my pieces straight up off of this coming straight up and that's going to keep them pressed out against the outside of the barrel and it's going to give me another contact reference all the way around um, so when i put these on theoretically i would only need to put one bolt on here to attach to because the current would flow through this ring inside the tank itself um, but i'm going to go ahead and wire them together i've got the connectors and stuff and you know a lot of stuff I do is overkill sometimes. So that's what I'm going to do with this. Um, so there's the pieces put together. Uh, let me go ahead and get some of this stuff cleaned up and get the welder out and we'll get started and I'll get this stuff welded together. All right, guys. So here we are. Um, I've got cables run, battery terminal ends. Um, I did short quarter 20s right here and I did a long one. On this side right here, this is where I'm going to be able to clamp to. Um, if you look down inside of it, you'll see that it's open on this side right here. Uh, so I should be able to lay something across right here to suspend a piece in here and make it work. Um, I've got everything tucked up against the side of the barrel there and got everything put in place. So now it's just a matter of setting up maybe the bed plate, getting it in here getting the uh i forgot the chemical name for the baking soda but basically baking soda in here and and uh hook it up to a 12 volt system and get it going 
Uh, so I'm gonna see what I can get rigged up. We'll see if we can get it going here. So what I've got right now, and I'll show you, you should be able to see it working in there. So what I've got on here is basically just a standard battery charger on two amps. Um, I'm clamped on to the block. And over here, I'm clamped on to my lead that jumps around. Um, the wrench is just hanging there. I put this on here so I can basically raise this up and down as I need to. Um, but right now, our electrolysis is working. Um, we've got our baking soda in there. It is actually eating the crap off from there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this be, let it run for a couple of hours, come back, take a look at it, see where it's at. Um, what I would like to do is maybe find a 12 volt power supply that I can put on here um, that doesn't require the entire battery charger like I've got down here. Um, this thing's running, like I said, at two amps here, basically pulling on the ammeter virtually nothing. Um, but rather than use the big battery charger like this, um, what I would prefer to do is have like a 12 volt power supply, but I need something that's going to produce two or more amps. But guys, listen, I appreciate y'all tuning in and following this Dakota build. Um, we're going to be coming to you with more videos for sure. So definitely hit that subscribe button, tick that bell so you get notified, drop comments or questions down below, and as always, we appreciate you tuning in.